Change happens and it can be very difficult. In this video, you're gonna learn from Amy Kay how to stay resilient in the face of change. Welcome to Happiness Adventure. I'm Lisa and together we'll explore ways to cultivate real joy in our lives. How can we stay resilient in, in tumultuous times or when we're out of our comfort zone because things are changing? Yeah, well, change is constant. So that's one thing that we know is we're always gonna be dealing with it. And one of the cool insights to know about change is that we actually go through the same four stages every single time. So it's a repeating pattern, even if the catalyst can be different. So change is always gonna start in one of three ways. So change is either gonna be external, meaning it happens without our consent. We're sort of blindsided by it. So it can be that we're fired and that came out of the blue. Somebody asked us for a divorce. There was a sudden death in a family or a friendship. So it's truly kind of tragic and shocking. Mm -hmm. The second type of catalyst that spins us into these change cycles is we choose it. It's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now it can still be difficult, it could still be divorce, but this time instead of being blindsided, we're choosing it, right? Mm -hmm. Or we choose a new job, we choose to quit, we're not fired, um, or we choose to move or start a new chapter. And then the third is when we're unfulfilled, mm -hmm. when we're in transition, when we sort of experience a little bit of mild depression, like this lack of hope for a compelling future, mm -hmm. and we realize this chapter needs to end. Like this just isn't working for us anymore. So there's only three types of catalysts and then you can kind of like identify them and spot them and then you realize you're about to go into one of these change cycles. So the first stage is death and rebirth. And I'm really serious about this. We have to learn to let go. We have to learn to challenge our assumptions. We have to learn to challenge our beliefs and the painful thoughts that are in our head. But death definitely comes first. You can't just ju jump into a new identity, jump into a new chapter, a new job, a new relationship without first grieving mm. what you're about to give up. And so in death and rebirth, I also call it the wine and Kleenex phase, you have to kind of just grieve mm -hmm. that this chapter is coming to a close and this is over and we don't want to rush it. And we need to let all that emotion up so that we can move in a healthy way forward. Stage two is dreaming and scheming. Dreaming and scheming is brainstorming and ideate and thinking about what you can become and what's next without actually taking the leap. So one of my biggest pieces of advice is explore, explore ideas. Uh -huh. Stay curious, but don't take action. Don't make a decision because you're gonna go into the rebound relationship, you're gonna take a job you don't really like, you're gonna to move to a state that you don't really identify with. We make actions too quickly and then we suffer. Then we put ourselves back. And then stage three is called the hero's saga. Joseph Campbell, the myth and all of that, um, we have to test ideas. Hmm. There has to be trial and error and we have to know that that's okay. We're not gonna get heavily, happily ever after in like 30 seconds. Happily ever after happens after 90 minutes of a movie. It's not instantaneous. Okay. And then we're in the promised land. And the promised land means let's take a deep breath. Let's say thank you. Let's thank our peers. Let's thank our family members. Let's thank all the people that supported us in Kleenex and wine, in dreaming <laughs> and scheming, in the hero saga. You know, let's enjoy this moment because at some point there's gonna be something else that shows up as a catalyst and we're gonna start all over again. Absolutely. And how do we know when it's time to move on from the dreaming and scheming, given that we don't want to rush that phase? You actually, you start to get a little bit more excited about testing your ideas. Try not to rush it just so that you can feel better. And this is where a lot of pain happens. We rush the sense of urgency because we think it's going to make us happier and it doesn't. So we're like, oh, Lisa, I should be further ahead. I should be testing this idea. So I say, take a deep breath. Okay. It's okay and then go back to get the clarity about what it is where you need to experience pleasure and purpose. How do you stand on that? What are you missing? What's gonna make you feel more connected? Mm -hmm. What's gonna make you feel significant? How are you gonna serve the world and others that's gonna bring you joy while being outside of yourself? That's gonna bring you back. And as soon as you get lit up by one of those ideas, you know it's time to start the hero saga. Those are beautiful questions. Great questions for reflection. They're great for clarity. And yeah. clarity is what allows us to move forward happy. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I've been talking to Amy Kay and she is sharing how we can move forward in the midst of change, which can be such an uncomfortable time in our life. So I'm gonna have the links to all of Amy Kay's resources in the description box right below this video. Please be sure to check them out. There are a lot of free resources and also I'm gonna have the link to her Amazon best-selling book there too. 
And then while you're there in the comment section, please let us know what is something that you're challenged with moving past right now during a time of change and what, what stage do you think that you're in? And then you can subscribe to receive a bite-sized bit of video to feed your happy each week. Thanks everybody and I can't wait to see you on our next happiness adventure.